<clears throat> okay, today's topic is biblical examples of country living. <clears throat> of course, the first country living experience was the Garden of Eden. A man's original home was in the garden. It wasn't in a house. It wasn't in a condo. It was in a garden. And then uh, life in God's garden, Genesis 2.8 says, The Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Then the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to keep it, attend it, and keep it. You know, there's something wonderful about living out in the country. Uh, God designed people in the very beginning for country living. He took the first man and he put him in a garden. There's just something about being out in nature surrounded by the things that God made that is so much better for our bodies and our souls. Um, then we have Enoch. Enoch walked with God. He was translated to heaven. Genesis 5 tells the story. Jared lived 162 years and begat Enoch. Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. So Jared was the father of Methuselah. Methuselah was the father of who? The grandfather of who? Noah. And uh, Methuselah, by the way, uh, I understand the, the name Methuselah meant when I die, it will come. And he worked on the ark until he died and then the flood came. I thought that was very interesting. So Enoch, by faith, Enoch was taken away, so uh, he did not see death and was not found because God had given him. For before he was taken, he had his, this, tes this testimony that he pleased God, Hebrews 11.5. <clears throat> ministering to the cities, page 11 says, Enoch walked with God, and yet he did, not, he did not live in any city polluted with violence and wickedness. He, Enoch, did not make his abode with the wicked. He placed himself and his family where the atmosphere would be as pure as possible. Then at times, he went forth to the inhabitants of the world with his God-given message. After proclaiming his message, he always took back with him this is pretty cool. He always took back with him to his place of retirement, meaning out in the country, some who had received the warning. Wise plans are to be laid in order that work may be done in, to the possible advan best possible advantage. More and more as wickedness increases in the great cities, we're to have a work to work them from outpost centers. This is the way Enoch labored in the days before the flood when wickedness was rife in every populous community and when violence was in the land. So the takeaway from this is we're not supposed to live in the city, but we're not supposed to be hermits. We're supposed to live close enough to be able to minister in the cities. So the question is, how close is that? And, and Ellen White never did say how close that was, but we can see examples of where she lived and, and stories that she would tell of people ministering in the cities. And it was basically a horse, horse and buggy ride to get to the city. Well, how would that compare today to a car? We as Adventists, we got the freedom to, to worship wherever we want. And the point is, even if you lived quite a ways out, if you're willing to travel to go to church and be part of Pathfinders and all that, and, and be doing ministry in the city, then you could live in the country and still do the same thing. Uh, I know of, I was told of a, of a well-meaning Adventist person who moved to Northern Idaho and lived 50 miles off the pavement. Now, in my opinion, I don't see any way outside of the internet that someone that's that remote, and they probably don't have internet that far out, but I don't know how you could balance ministering in the cities with living in the country in that kind of scenario. So when we when we consider where we live, we need to get out of harm's way. We need to do it for our kids' sake. We need to do it for our own salvation. And like was said earlier, we can live in the country and bring the city in with us. You know, we've got all the technology to just bring it home. So you need to literally get out of the city and whatever that means, but not go so far that you can't minister in the populated areas. So Enoch, as he as God's commandment, keeping, keeping people, we must leave the cities. As did Enoch, we must work the cities, but not dwell in them. Then we have Abraham. Now the Lord said to Abram, 
get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Hebrews 11, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, and heirs with him for the same promise. For he waited for the city which God has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Then we have Isaac. Isaac, uh, he, he sowed in that land, uh, Genesis 26, and reaped in the same year of a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And, and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous, for he had possessions of flocks and herds and a great number of servants. So he was obviously a rancher, so to speak. Then we have Jacob, Genesis 28. Then he dreamed and beheld a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father and the God of Isaac. And the land in which you lie, I will bring, give to you and your descendants. Jacob awoke from his sleep in the deepest stillness of the night. The shining forms of his vision had disappeared. Only the dim outline of the lonely hills and above them the heavens bright with stars now met his gaze. But he had a solemn sense that God was with him. Then we have Moses. Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down at by the well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came and drew water, and they filled the, the troughs of water with the father's flock. The Lord directed, according to patriarchs and prophets, the Lord directed his course, and he found a home with Jethro, the priest, and the prince of Midian, and who was also a worshiper of God. After a time, Moses married one of the daughters of Jethro, and here, in the service of his father-in-law, as a keeper of the flock, he remained 40 years. So he lived in the country 40 years, having grown up in the city. He was right in the palace. And then uh, God instructed him to go back and pull, pull all the Israelites out and get into the country away from Pharaoh. Uh, education, page 63. Amid, amidst the solemn more, um, majesty of the mountain solitudes, Moses was alone with God. Everywhere the Creator's name was written. Here Moses gained that which went with him throughout the years of his toilsome and care-burdened life, a sense of personal presence of the Divine One. So it wasn't until he got out in the country for an extended period of time that, that he got this, this peaceful uh, kind of existence. And God was able to remove from his experience these things that he had been taught in Pharaoh's courts. Now Moses was tending with the flock and Jero, Jethro, his father, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to he Herob, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in the midst of the bush. Then we go ahead after the uh, Israelites had wandered in the desert and we have Caleb and Joshua looking for the promised land. And then you have David. He was, he was tending sheep. And then you have Amos. Amos was a sheep herder, a sycamore fig farmer, and got prophetic message for the cities of Samaria and Bethel. And then you have John the Baptist. He lived in the desert, in the wilderness. He ate locusts and wild honey. And then we think of Jesus' disciples. The first disciples were fishermen from the Sea of Galilee. The 12 disciples traveled with Jesus from place to place. And then Jesus himself, he, most days, he would find quiet and solitude in, in the hills to be able to commune with his father. So these are all examples of, of people in the Bible who were uh, taking advantage of the benefits of being out of the city. Now, we have as Seventh-day Adventists the spirit of prophecy and the calls to move out of the city into the country. Country Living, page 6. It's not God's purpose that people should be crowded in the cities, huddled together in terraces and tenements. In the beginning, he placed his first parents amidst the beautiful sights and sounds. He desires us to rejoice in, in today. The most nearly we come in harmony with God's original plan, the more favorable will be the position to secure health of body, mind, and soul. 
the first city, by the way, was uh, uh, in Genesis 4. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. That's the son of Adam who killed his brother. And dwelt in the land of Nod, east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore a son, Enoch. That's a different Enoch. This guy didn't work, walk with God. He built a city. So there's a first city called the name of the city after his son, Enoch. Now watch this if you've never heard this before. Enoch is believed to have been the largest city in the world at its height. 40,000 residents with about 80,000 people living in the surrounding areas. That's pretty good size. Um, cause especially for back then. <clears throat> uh, city states were the feature of the southern Mesopotamia. Hence the need felt by, the Mo by Moses to mention Cain's city. Now, uh, there is a science fiction story about Enoch. Uh, it's, it's, uh, writ it's called The Writings of Je Jess Hill. Jess Hill, a science fiction writer, tells in one of his novels about the city of Enoch as part of the underworld, the other world. So the devil made a, used this first city and then replicated it even in a novel in our, in our day. And then uh, the underworld, Enoch is the name given to the city of the dead. It's located in the upper reaches of the underworld. It is often hailed as a way station for ghosts entering the underworld, Enoch. Now the Mormon church have an Enoch. I don't know if you knew that. As a leader and a prophet of the people of God, Enoch met personally with the Lord. This is, this is what they say. Uh, on many occasions throughout the 365 year ministry, we know this because Enoch received many visions from God and walked with him, quoting the Doctrine of the Covenant book, um, and talked with him face to face. During his ministry, Enoch also built a city for the people of God or the people who repented and were baptized. So this city was made for Mormons and those who became Mormons. This city whose inhabitants would later be translated to heaven was known as the city of Enoch. Then we have Babylon, which I would have thought was the first big city, but actually Enoch was the first city. But Enoch was bigger, it was the first major city. And we know that story because after the flood, then the, then the wicked people thought that they could prevent being drowned by a flood if they built the Tower of Babel. And they said, come let us build ourselves a city, a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. God told people to go be fruitful and multiply. But these people said, no, 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 let's go together. Can we can band together and protect ourselves? It is believed that Babylon was the first city to reach a population of 200,000. Then we had Sodom and Gomorrah. So uh, Genesis 13 said, please separate from me. It, if you take the left, then I'll go to the right. If you take the right, I'll go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered and every, everywhere like the garden of the Lord. Then Lot chose for himself all of the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east. They separated from each other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities in the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. I haven't documented this or found it, but I, I understand somebody told me that, that Lot originally didn't go in the city. He lived outside of the city, like the suburb, and then eventually they succumbed to moving into the city. Uh, Country Living, page 30. When iniquity abounds in the nation, there will always be heard some voice giving warning and instruction, as the voice of Lot was heard in Sodom. Yet Lot could have preserved his family from many evils had he not made his home in the wicked, polluted city. All that Lot and his family did in Sodom could have been done by them if they had lived someplace, some distance away from the city. So their intentions when they went there was to minister to the cities. But when you're right in the middle of it, it's going to consume you. You're going to become like them. Yeah. By beholding, you become changed. Then we have Nineveh. And of course, uh, Cush begat, begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Eric, Akkad and Kalnan, I never took phonics, so I can't pronounce these things, in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went to Assyria and built Nineveh. 
And then Jonah 3.3 3 describes Nineveh as an exceedingly great city of three days journey in breadth. So however long it'd take you to go three days walking, that's how big it was. That, that could be pretty big. I would think in this case it'd be 60 miles across. That's a lot bigger than Seattle. The prophet Jonah gave his this description. Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons. Well, it was a bit wide city, but 120,000. So you, you know the story. Uh, he warned them that, uh, that they were going to get destroyed. And uh, then they repented and God held off on the destruction. Then they went back to evil and they were destroyed. Instead of 40 days later, they were destroyed 40 years later. Country Living, page 5. Instead of crowded sitting, seek some retired situation. Retired means, it doesn't mean uh, retirement. It, I, I researched that because she uses that word and it gets confusing. Retired means out in nature, out in the country. Uh, seek some retired place to live is what that means. Where the children can be as far as possible, shielded from temptation, and there train and educate them for usefulness. Go to where you can look upon the works of God. Find rest of the Spirit in the beauty and the quietude and the peace of nature. Well, friends, it is possible to live completely off the grid and be fairly comfortable. Uh, it takes some wisdom, it takes some planning, and I'll admit I'm a little conflicted because we have a great work in the city. Uh, the people, most of the people in the world now live by the centers of population. But the Bible tells us that someday, Matthew chapter 24, the abomination that makes desolate will be set up and those that be in Judea, Jesus says, flee into the mountains. There'll be a time we need to flee. You pray, I mean, you know, it's not wise for a person to just say, I'm gonna sell everything I have and go move to the hills. You need to be practical, you need to make sure that you have a way to support yourself and you don't lose your opportunity to witness to the people where they are. Country Living, page 24. Parents can, parents can secure small homes in the country with land for cultivation. And on such places, the children will not be surrounded with the corrupting influence of city life. God will help his people to find such homes outside the cities. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, Homestead Remedies, How to Be Self-Sufficient When the Grid Goes Down, Wild Edible and Medicinal Plants, Hydrotherapy, and End Time Bible Prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.